Okay, so the Arizona rancher George Kelly's wife taking the stand at his trial today, this murder trial we've been following where he's accused of shooting and killing a migrant on his property in January of last year. News Nation a legal contributor uh, Jesse Weber joins us now. Jesse's also an anchor at the Long Crime Network, as you know. So the wife taking the stand. So again, we've talked about this case before, but this is a rancher out in Arizona uh, accused of shooting and killing this migrant on his land. What did the his wife add or subtract today, do we know? So remember, she was called by the prosecution, I think a good witness for the defense, hmm. because what did she say? She said she observed these men on their property with backpacks and weapons. So if you're wondering whether or not he was justified in taking out his weapon, remember, he says he didn't shoot the victim in this case, that he fired in the air. Right. Now, she never saw the shots herself. She said she was inside the home, but she heard gunshots, and according to her testimony, the first thing she thought was her husband firing into the air, because that's what he would have done. And I, I thought, thought that was important. Before the trial, we, we, we were saying that they were found to be unarmed. But is that not true? Do we not know whether they were armed? There, there's a, well, the problem with this case is there's a lot of back and forth about whether or not they were armed, what George Kelly said, whether they're armed. The number one issue for the prosecution, Connell, is that bullet that struck the victim has not been recovered. We right. don't know where it is. Now, there was forensic testimony that suggested he could have been shot with a long rifle, but we don't know definitively, especially if you don't have the bullet. So I think this is a kind of an uphill battle for the case for the prosecution to say that George Kelly's the one that killed him. Now, there was some more testimony yesterday. I want to play a clip from this, yep. which speaks to the point that you were just getting to a moment ago about whether or not um, these folks were armed yep. and, and, you know, whether they were seen carrying weapons, which the wife, she, she was definitive, by the way, in her testimony today. She said, yeah, I saw, I saw weapons. That's what she said. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is the testimony from yesterday. Same subject. Let's listen. Did Mr. Kelly tell you with respect to the subjects, the individuals that he saw and whether or not they were carrying rifles? He advised me or he, he told me that uh, he observed them wearing backpacks and possibly carrying rifles. So his word to you was possibly? Correct. And then did you speak to Mrs. Kelly? Yes. And Mrs. Kelly um, also told you that she thought she observed rifles, is that right? Correct. And what did she see, say about when, when you asked her whether they were all carrying rifles, what was her response? She said no. Hmm. Interesting. So that's the deputy yeah. testimony about what they said to the police. And look, it is a problem for George Kelly because there was evidence to suggest when he first spoke with law enforcement, he didn't bring up the idea of them carrying weapons. And look, whenever you have a witness uh, who alleged, or excuse me, you have a defendant who gave conflicting reports about it, it's going to be problematic. But I think there are a lot of holes in this case for the prosecution. Right. Um, and I think there's alternative possibilities that have been brought up by the defense that are they're finding holes here. And if it's a case of reasonable doubt, you're talking about murder in this case. It might not be a conviction. Well, again, it wasn't, and it doesn't seem to be a question just whether it was justified or in self-defense, but whether or not he was the shooter is what they're trying to raise the reasonable doubt about. Remember, they said that this is drug smugglers, that this might have been he heard gunshots, came outside, and that uh, Mr. Budamea, who's the victim in this case, might have been shot by drug smugglers. And we had a, one of the key witnesses in this case who said that he was previously drug smuggling. So this idea, if I were to say to you, Connell, you know, the defense is raising this idea that he was killed by drug smugglers, that seems outlandish. But the more this story develops, the more it seems to have a little bit of weight of water to it. Especially if you're only looking for some reasonable doubt yeah. and we don't have the, the forensics necessarily to back right. up what the uh, prosecution is saying. All right, we'll keep following that. I do want to get a word out on this whole Chad Daybell situation. Um, the, I guess, what do we call it? The doomsday cult trial, sure. sort of, so to speak, or the second one. Um, where are we? Still jury selection, right? So let's take a step back, right? It was him and his wife who were charged with the killings of her children. He is also charged specifically with the murder of his wife, Tammy Daybell, who died and then he married Lori Valadebell two weeks later. Two weeks later. Uh, right. Still in jury selection. We expect opening statements Monday. I actually think it's more difficult to find a jury in this case because you already have the trial of Lori Valadebell. She was already convicted. Finding a jury that doesn't know anything about the case or doesn't have an opinion about it mm. after Lori Vallow was convicted is tough. But remember, this is also a death penalty case, unlike Lori Valadebell, which adds another complication because finding jurors, even given the grotesque and really disturbing allegations here, that could say yes in right. favor of, you know, the death penalty, even the most egregious case, is very tough here. Right. Do a lot of people in jury selection, is that how they get, not get out of jury duty, but get out of being on a jury in that case? So, you know what, I'm so not So cynical, right. Connell. No, look, they, they no, go with... But, but, but seriously, does a lot yeah. of people say that at the end, if this is in, in these... Obviously, we don't have a lot of death penalty cases, period. But in right. that case, it comes down to it, and the person says, no, I can't go through with it. That's, and they would could be excused, yeah. or they could say, listen, I... I 
don't, it's not something I thought of, or it's not something I'm typically in favor of, or, but if I can look at the facts and the evidence, and I feel that I could you actually vote in favor of it, then that would be it. It's right. a very hard, hard burden to ask, but you know, with this kind of case, I'm not surprised uh, given the level of accusations uh, and what he's accused of. One of the key differences. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.